What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Aljamain Sterling exposes UFC tactic. When Aljamain Sterling and Sugar Sean O'Malley collided at UFC 292, Sterling was confident that the event would do massive pay-per-view numbers given how much hype the UFC was putting behind the challenger. After the pay-per-view numbers came out in December, however, Sterling was left floored, questioning whether O'Malley was really a draw given how poorly the event performed on pay-per-view. Heading into O'Malley's first title defense at UFC 299, Sterling spoke on the MMA Hour where he shed light on how he believes the UFC is stacking the card to make O'Malley appear as a bigger draw than he is. It's just kind of funny that the, the UFC felt the need to stack this card so much to make it feel like Sean is the draw. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's, actually, it's actually comical because I know people were kind of trying to get on the 300. But I'm like, well, a lot of those fights that people probably would have wanted were on 299 for whatever reason. Um, I mean, it doesn't take much to kind of draw conclusions. Uh, you want to build somebody up, you build up and you bring the other eyeballs with all these other people. As Sterling pointed out, the UFC 299 card is looking absolutely stacked, with Dustin Poirier and Benoit St. Dennis set to compete in a thrilling five-round co-main. At the same time, fan favorites Kevin Holland and Michael Page will also be competing on the card, along with two more fights that will see welterweights Gilbert Burns and Jack Della Maddalena throw down, and bantamweight contenders Peter Yan and Sonya Dong go to war. Whether the event performs well on pay-per-view, only time will tell. Next up, let's take a look at who will Israel Adesanya fight next? While Israel Adesanya has indicated that he will be returning to action sooner rather than later, it's remained unclear when the former champ will book his big return. In the wake of Dragas Duplessis' win over Sean Strickland, many have held out hope that the last Albender will return for UFC 300 in April. Although the former champion is back in the gym training, Mike Angove of City Kickboxing recently indicated in an interview with Sky Sports New Zealand that Adesanya's return date is completely in the hands of the UFC. At the same time, he also name-dropped three potential opponents for the last stylebender in a highly anticipated return. Um, obviously, Izzy Drikas is one of those fights. Israel is one of their biggest stars. Uh, Drikas is, is a new up-and-comer, um, so that certainly has some appeal. But whether it's then or, or, or whether that opportunity is still there later, um, really, that's, that's not in our court. What we know is we have to uh, prepare for that potential fight. We have to prepare for a potential fight with Strickland. We have to prepare for a potential fight with Hamzat um, because those are, the, those are the most obvious options on the table. And the, the timing, it's not up to us. While all three of the fights would almost certainly deliver fireworks, the expectation is that Adesanya will return for a fight with Drakus Duplessis, given the newly crowned champion has expressed a desire to defend the title against the last stylebender and settle their beef. Next up, let's take a look at huge Sean Strickland update after UFC 297 loss. Former middleweight champion Sean Strickland loves to fight, whether he's challenging a few motorists to an impromptu scrap on the side of the road or throwing down in front of thousands of fans inside the octagon, Strickland simply loves to fight. After his recent loss to Drakus Duplessis, Strickland was seen congratulating his opponent inside the octagon moments after the decision was read, earning him props from the MMA community. According to Strickland's teammate Chris Curtis, who spoke on a recent episode of the MMA Hour, one of the things that makes the former middleweight champ unique is that he's able to separate his career from his personal life. From the sounds of things, this has served him well since his narrow loss in UFC 297. Sean loves fighting, but Sean Strickland is not Sean the fighter. Mm. Fighting is something he loves, but this isn't who he is. It doesn't define him as a person. And he's like, he's disappointed. He's like, yeah, it sucks, whatever. But he's not going to go beat himself up on it. Like we're going, to, he's like hitting me up since yesterday about snowboarding tomorrow. So let's go snowboard, let's go do this, blah, blah, blah. If the roles were reversed, I'd be like in a dark hole somewhere, like contemplating everything's gone wrong. And he's like, all right, it sucks, whatever. We'll figure it out later. Let's go do stuff. Wow. So he, he, he's feeling it well, man. As Curtis went on to point out, Strickland has already surpassed the expectations many have set for him, especially when considering that doctors told him he shouldn't fight again after his 2018 motorcycle accident. With his focus on the big picture and his sights set on returning to title contention, it'll be interesting to see where the former champ goes from here. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at Paulo Costa can't knock out Robert Whittaker? Heading into Robert Whittaker and Paulo Costa's highly anticipated UFC 298 showdown, the stakes are at an all-time high for both men. Heading into the fight, light heavyweight veteran Anthony Leinhardt-Smith has questioned whether or not Costa has what it takes 
to knock Whitaker out, given that his last finish by TKO took place in 2018. He spoke on a recent episode of he and Michael Bisping's Believe You Me podcast. Guys, listen, I know that everyone's going to get mad at me when I say this, but Paulo's always been regarded as this crazy heavy hitter, knockout artist. Like, he hasn't knocked out anybody in a while. So, like, he, is They're he coming ex- for you already? Well, is he explosive and aggressive and he, and he does land a lot of big shots? Absolutely. But, like, think of the last person he flatlined. It, it's, I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head. Like, he was in there with Luke. He had Luke Rockhold hurt a couple times. And, and wasn't able to put it wasn't able to put him out. Currently, Costa sits as a slight underdog on DraftKings Sportsbook at plus 160, while Whitaker sits as a negative 192 favorite, indicating that the MMA community may agree with Smith. Of course, there's also been plenty of concern whether the fight would actually wind up taking place, given that Costa had previously indicated he had not signed the contract yet. Despite leaving fans perplexed by a post on social media on January 28th, where he simply wrote, The former title challenger shut down any talk of him pulling out of the fight, proving that he was simply trolling fans and sparking concern about potential withdrawal. Along with a video showing rose petals spelling out, I'm not pulling out, Costa wrote, I have a message for all you mother Fs. Thankfully for fans, despite Costa's trolling, it sounds like all systems are a go for UFC 298. Next, let's take a look at UFC Fight Updates. Heading into this weekend's UFC Fight Night Dolice vs. Imavov card, let's take a look at some UFC Fight Updates, starting with a report from James Lynch indicating that Melsic Bagdasarian is out of his fight with Haider Amil at UFC Fight Night Hermanson vs. Pfeiffer on February 10th. So far, no word on what forced Bagdasarian out of the fight. However, fortunately for fight fans, it appears as though that there is optimism that a short notice replacement could potentially step in. Shifting gears to a fight announcement, reports have indicated that Trevor Peak and Charlie Campbell will collide at UFC Fight Night Vittori vs. Allen on April 6th. The fight seems poised to deliver fireworks, with Peak eager to build on the first decision win of his career back in October, while on the flip side, Campbell will look to build on a successful UFC debut back in September. Last but certainly not least, Dominance MMA head Ali Abdelaziz has indicated that he finally has news to share regarding Umar Nurmagomedov's next fight. In a pair of posts on social media, Abdelaziz wrote, Umar Nurmagomedov fight news March 2, who's excited? Before then adding in a separate post, finally somebody accept the fight with Umar Nurmagomedov March 2. So far, no word yet as to who Nurmagomedov is going to fight. However, given how difficult it's been for the undefeated contender to secure a fight, the consensus seems to be that his opponent could be in for a rough night. Next, let's take a look at Fighter Goes Off on Dana White in Interview. Fighter pay has been a hot topic over the years, with many fans eager to see fighters make what they're worth. Through the ongoing antitrust suit against the UFC, a number of high-profile fighters have had their purses leaked, putting the conversation about fighter pay back into the spotlight once more. During a recent appearance on One Champion, with Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson's Mighty Cast, former welterweight champion Tyron Woodley revealed that he had been fighting with the UFC for more pay during his title reign, long before the class action lawsuit against the UFC was certified. The way he saw things at the time, as a champion, he should be making more than top-ranked contenders like Donald Cerrone. I was going to lead the UFC after um, Darren and Teal, right? Mm. I said, I told them, I said, cut me, dog. Y'all want me here, man? Why don't you hold on to me, dog? Like, we keep fighting to get every fight because, you know, you know how I was. I was a gorilla. I, I just, I knew the number so well. I knew what everybody was making. I'm not going to go out there and be making the same as Cowboy Cerrone. That motherfucker ain't never touched gold in his life. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. No, that's just a principal thing. Although Woodley no longer competes in the UFC, it's clear that there's still plenty of bad blood between he and the professional brass for how they handled his time as champion. Next, let's take a look at UFC reveals major rule change soon. During the UFC 297 pay-per-view, Arnold Allen threw a series of knees at his opponent, Movzari Vloyev, that had the potential to change the course of the fight, swinging momentum back in Allen's favor. Despite that, Ivloyev managed to put his hand down on the mat, making Allen's strikes illegal according to the rules that they were fighting under in Toronto. Although referee Mark Goddard was right to pause the fight in that situation, the incident caused quite a bit of confusion, with many members of the MMA community unclear on whether the knees were illegal or not. During a recent episode of the MMA Hour, California State Athletic Commission Director Andy Foster explained that he believes it's time to rewrite the definition of what it means to be a grounded fighter. We're going to get rid of the hand. We're going to, that's my proposal. We're going to get rid of it. If you want to be down, you need to put something else down. Knee, 
back, anything, anything other than you can't be standing up, putting your hand on the ground. It's caused too much confusion. A rule that we put in for safety has in fact created an unsafe environment and it's created an untenable environment for referees to regulate this. They all view it differently. Of course, while this wouldn't universally change the rule across the board for all athletic commissions, should California decide to change the definition of a grounded fighter, there would be precedents for other athletic commissions to follow suit. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.